mallet finger, there will be a rupture or avulsion of the terminal extensor tendon. And the patient will not be able to actively extend the DIP joint. Injury to the distal pharynx could be an avulsion of the insertion of the flexor or the extensor tendon. And the fracture may appear small and benign. Here is a picture of a mallet finger, dorsal base fracture, and here is a picture of a jersey finger, volar base fracture. The two pictures are side by side for comparison. In mallet finger, the patient will have a dorsal base fracture. The fracture is called bony avulsion of the distal pharynx, bony mallet. In jersey finger, the patient will have a volar base fracture. In jersey finger, the patient is unable to flex the DIP joint due to involvement of the flexor digitorum profundus. Be aware of avulsion fracture at the base of the distal pharynx because it should be evaluated thoroughly. A review of anatomy. Here is the distal pharynx, here is the DIP, and here is the extensor tendon terminal insertion into the base of the distal pharynx. A mallet finger is caused from a blow to the finger at the DIP joint that forces the joint into forced flexion. Mallet finger usually involves the long ring and the small fingers of the dominant hand. The injury typically occurs from playing ball sports such as baseball, football, and volleyball. The patient is unable to straighten the DIP due to injury at the tendon insertion. The finger is flexed patient is unable to do active DIP extension. The finger is bent in hyperflexion and looks like a mallet due to disruption of the terminal part of the extensor tendon from its insertion into the distal pharynx and the patient is unable to straighten the DIP joint. The injury can occur as an avulsion fracture, a bony injury, or purely a tendon injury. An X-ray may show avulsion of the distal pharynx or a large bony fracture with subluxation of the joint. If the fracture is large, there might be a volar subluxation of the distal pharynx. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.